Monday Morning House Calls, sponsored by UK Healthcare. And welcome back to Mountain News this morning. Today we're being joined by Dr. Joe Kingry of UK Healthcare. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Kingry. Thanks for having me. And of course, today we're talking about back to school. Of course, a lot of kids are back to school uh, at this point. You know, we are late August right now, of course, the last day of August. That being said, you know, kids are kind of dreading it, but I guess kind of getting back in that routine. Any tips for any kids who maybe aren't back in that routine yet? They're still kind of lagging from the summer. Sure. It's a hard adjustment for any children, uh, as well as the parents, to, to be able to get back in the swing of things. So I think, obviously, a lot of kids are back to school now. They've already got their backpacks, they've got their school supplies, and they're back in school. But there's still an adjustment period that takes place um, because they've been out summer playing, not used to the routine. Biggest thing, I would say, is still the sleep issue is going to be a little bit of a problem, uh, trying to get kids to bed. Um, so I think just reinforcing getting kids to bed at a, at a reasonable hour before school getting them up in the morning and maybe even doing that on the weekend some too because we tend to say well, we'll let them rest through the weekend but again it's keeping that routine going um, but a part of it also is just uh, adjusting to the new class new teacher sometimes and also other children who maybe they haven't met before so I think just spending a little bit of extra time with the kids when they get home talking about school how things are going what all they did today and trying to see if there's any concerns that might be going on. And of course, looking at it from a physical health standpoint, how right. much sleep is it ideal for kids to get? So again, it goes back to the typical eight hours is, is what we'd recommend for anyone to get, uh, adults or children both. Uh, so that's, that's the big key thing. And also the thing to keep in mind um, is it's going to start being cold and flu season soon and kids get back to school, they start sharing germs, mm -hmm. unfortunately, uh, come home with ear infections and different things. Um, the more sleep they get, obviously, the better their, their immune system will be. They'll be ramped up, help fight that off. Um, so that, that's obviously very important. And, of course, we look at that because, you know, a lot of times, you know, especially as it gets colder, you know, kids are going to be, you know, together in a room for several hours a day, even more so when the weather gets cold and it's less desirable to be outside. I mean, what can parents do and what can kids do to maybe slow down or stop that spread of illness in the school environment? I think the biggest thing is making sure that they wash their hands really good, hand hygiene, um, having tissues available, reminding them and teaching them to cover their mouth and nose when they sneeze or cough to keep from spreading those germs, and also just trying to distance themselves some from, from kids who may be doing that. Um, but also, if you have any concerns, of course, get in to see your provider, get them checked out, make sure that they're okay and okay to go to school. And of course, if kids are sick, probably better off to keep them at home, right? Hey, right, exactly. Hand sanitizer in the backpack, a good idea? I think it, it depends on the school, whether or not they'll allow it. Uh, I think in, in one respect, it's a good thing because they can sanitize their hands. But again, it depends on your school, whether or not they're going to allow you to have that in your backpack. All right. Dr. Kingry, thanks for joining us. And Mountain News this morning continues in just a moment.